Hello and welcome again to another biochemistry optical core tutorial video. Today I'm going to talk about uh, one of the three parts to the NSTORM microscope system, the wide field component for all of your simplest imaging experiments uh, that can't be solved with a confocal. The wide field is an excellent resource uh, because it allows you to modify different filters to better approximate the excitation and emission wavelengths of your fluorophores. Uh, it's very quick and consequently you can get a lot of data out of it very easily. Uh, so to begin with I want to start with what is a wide field and also how to set up the box wide field. So let's begin with what's a wide field system. Well, I like to begin everything with just a very basic light path for uh, a microscope. So we start with a light source that is, of course, going to give us the light we need for fluorescence ex excitation. This light source for a wide field setup is traditionally done using an arc lamp or a white light LED. Bach uses a white light LED. And it's white light because ultimately we're going to take that white light and then with filters we can isolate specific colors of light to excite our sample with whatever we want. Now then after the light source we send that excitation light through a series of different lenses. So most importantly an objective lens. There's a 4x, a 10x, and a 20x, all of which are air-based objectives. And then we have a 40x, a 60x, and a 100x as well. The 40 through 100x are all oil-based objectives. So the light source goes through these lenses and eventually is able to excite our sample. And it's called a wide field because this light just bathes the entire sample. Let's take a second and kind of zoom in a little bit on what's going on with the light source here. So if we look at a cross section instead of that sample where now sort of uh, the y-axis is depth, uh, we can take a look at how fluorescence is interacting in this scenario to kind of get a better feel about the, the strengths and weaknesses of wide field microscopy. So if we now have the light source underneath, just for better visualization, all these green dots, they represent fluorophores. You might have multiple fluorophores in your experiment or you might just have one. So in this case, I just have one. But what's going on here is that when light excites these fluorophores, the emission can do many different things. Uh, so in this case, that little arrow represents that the fluorescence emission can just go off in random directions. There's also some of that light from fluorophores which can interact with the tissue itself or, or the sample itself and get absorbed by the sample so you won't even see that light. Other fluorescence might interact with other fluorescent species and might interact with itself or, or other kinds of, of fluorescent species. There's, there's a mission that will go back into the objective, and that's the light that we collect with a detector so that you see. In our case, we use a camera-based detector system to collect the light and actually visualize it on the computer. Now, the important thing about this is that there's a lot of different ways light can interact with tissue. Consequently, wide field is very quick to do, but it's also very imprecise. So if you're looking for a lot of optical sectioning, meaning you just want to see slivers of your sample, you don't want to see the entire block of tissue at once, you're going to want to use something like a confocal. Whereas if you have a very thin sample that doesn't have a lot of 3D structure to it, a wide field can be a really great avenue for imaging because you don't have to worry about out of focus blur or, or light that will interfere with your signal. So we talked about what wide field microscopy is, and that's just bathing the entire sample in, uh, in light instead of being more precise like a confocal or even a multi-photon system. The next thing that I want to talk about today is or how to set up the basic wide field that we have in the Bach. To begin with, uh, let's just kind of get ourselves oriented around this microscope system. Let's orient ourselves by kind of identifying the specific components that I mentioned just a second ago. So actually the white light comes through a liquid light guide from the right side here and into the left. So you can't really see it of course, but there's a f set of filters right here that are going to take this white light and filter the light that you would uh, actually want to then excite your sample. So light kind of goes in here, goes up through the microscope, and then it goes up the objective lens and ultimately excite your sample with, with some filtered light. That light is then collected by the objective again and it goes either to uh, this detector right here, which is our an Andor camera. If you have dim samples or fluorescence maybe that, that isn't emitting a ton of light, 
you can bump up the signal that you see with some mechanics that are present in the Andor camera. Alternatively, you can send that light to the right side here and send it to our Hamamatsu camera. And this detector is really good for fast imaging experiments. So if you're doing like calcium dynamics, it doesn't have quite the sensitivity or, or ability to detect light as our Andor camera does. But if your sample's bright and you want to get really fast information, the Hamamatsu camera can provide that maybe better than the Andor camera can. So let's talk about the actual startup procedure. The first thing you're going to want to do is actually turn the power switch that has a, a yellow tape, piece of tape labeled one. You want to turn that power switch to on. And that's located right here. Uh, so the second step is to turn the power switch labeled two to on. And this one's located kind of out of shot. The third step then is to turn another power switch it's just to the right of this large white box and it's labeled three. So you'll just want to flip that power switch as well. And that completes all the power switches you have to turn on. So at this point, you can turn on the workstation computer, log into your WISC account. So after turning on the workstation computer, you're going to want to actually put your sample on the stage. You're going to want to move the desired objective into position. You can do it either on the microscope itself, or if you've already signed into Elements, there's a way to do it on Elements. But shown here is the microscope method. You can see something just says obj, objective and you can move it either to the left or right, but basically just press this button until you, you move the objective you want into position. And if it's an oil-based objective, you're going to want to add just a single drop of oil to that objective. And the oil is going to be uh, likely on the left or right side of the microscope system. I've also provided here just a very simple way of showing you how I add a drop of oil. This, I think, is an ideal amount of oil to add to it. So you can see it's just one drop here, and that's all you need. The final step is going to be signing into elements on the workstation. So to do that, uh, there's usually two icons on the desktop computer, one of which is for this thing, uh, analysis. What you'll want to click instead is this uh, just standard NIS elements AR. So this is going to be the software that is used to actually run the microscope system. And once that opens, you're going to need to create a new user setup. So you just want to check this box, unless, of course, your lab already has a user group set up. So if that's the case, then you'll just want to click this drop-down box and look for your lab name. Otherwise, like I said, you'll create new user, check this box, you'll put your name in, and I would not put a password in. Uh, you can just skip the password, and I think that's preferable because the password, adding a password makes it more difficult for me to potentially need to access your elements account to fix something. So once you do this, I don't have a, a picture of this, but after you've created a new user profile, elements is going to prompt you to choose sort of the environment elements should open in. On this particular microscope setup, there are really four main environments that it'll load for you. Two of them are have nothing to do with NStorm. Two of them do. By default, you'll just choose and or by itself if you're doing wide field microscopy or Hamamatsu by itself. If you're doing NStorm, then of course you want to choose one of those camera options with the NStorm. And ultimately at that point, you're, you're through Elements' startup procedure and it should open to a blank screen from which you can, you can actually start doing your experiment. Let's say you finished your experiment and you're now wanting to shut down the wide field setup. Well, thankfully, shutting down the wide field is as easy as turning it on, which is really just a matter of shutting down the computer, removing your sample, and wiping the oil, if there's oil on the objective, and cleaning it. And just to show you what I do here for that, I take a piece of lens tissue and just initially wipe off the objective. Just to show you how that kind of looks, um, this video, I'm just taking a piece of lens tissue paper, not Kim wipes, lens tissue paper. I folded it and I'm just kind of pressing down lightly and getting the oil off of that objective. And you can see here, um, there's a little bit of oil, there's a lot of oil and then there's basically no oil. And when you see no oil, that's good. You have no oil left on there that you can easily wipe off. Now you want to switch to sparkle. So I've added just a spray of sparkle to the lens tissue paper. And I'm doing the same motion. I'm just wiping it off. And then finally, I do it one more time with a piece of dry 
uh, lens tissue paper. And then at that point, your objective should be clean. And the rest of it is just simply turning off the power switches that you turned on for your experiments. So that means turning off the one label three, then label two, and then finally labeled one. So that finishes up this video for the basic wide field setup. Stay tuned for some more videos on how to operate the filters themselves, talking a little bit more about the cameras and some other topics as it pertains to that particular part of the microscope. Um, also, I'm going to do a startup for the turf and the end storm components. Um, so stay tuned for those as well. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please send them to the Bach email. And thank you for watching.